So people don't even know what metabolism is. It's really remarkable how uh, this word that's been f flitting around in the zeitgeist for so long and nobody really, really understands it. Metabolism is basically how you take anything from the outside and make it part of your inside. That's metabolism. And there is protein metabolism, there is carbohydrate metabolism, there is fat metabolism, there is uh, micronutrients that are involved in that metabolism. Ultimately, metabolism is how we stay alive, day to, minute to minute, day to day. Now, the part of metabolism that's gotten the most interest is energy metabolism. And it turns out that defects in energy metabolism account for almost all of the chronic diseases that we see today. Type 2 diabetes, hypertension, lipid problems, cardiovascular disease, cancer, dementia, fatty liver disease, polycystic ovarian disease. These eight diseases are currently 75% of all healthcare dollars in the United States, and not one of them has a cure. And they are all defects in energy metabolism. And ultimately, I'll even go further, they're all defects in the mitochondria because the mitochondria are what the, are the parts of the cell that process the food energy to turn it into chemical energy for use by your body. And when those are screwed, so are you. So obesity, nobody even knows what it means. They're about to redefine it. Okay, it used to be increased BMI. They're now going to say, yes, it's excess adiposity. Well, excess adiposity where? Because there are three fat depots and they're not the same. And they contribute to disease differently. So the fat depot that everyone talks about, of course, is the subcutaneous or big butt fat. As in, does this bathing suit make me look fat, fat? Never answer that question. <laughs> That fat is actually metabolically inert. That fat is not the cause of the disease. Now, just so happens we have a lot of it and we can make more of it. And the more we make of it, the more likely that one of the other two fat depots are also going to start enlarging as well. And that's where the disease comes from. So what are those other two fat depots? There's the visceral fat, the belly fat, the big belly fat, okay? And you don't need a lot of big belly fat to get sick. We know that from patients with depression. We know that from patients with Cushing syndrome. They don't necessarily gain a lot of weight, but they gain a lot of belly fat, and so they get sick. And the reason is because the belly fat drains into the liver, and the liver is ground zero for all of this energy metabolism. And so that fat then disrupts the liver and that's why you end up with chronic disease. And then finally, the third fat depot is the liver itself, that liver fat. So it used to be that if you had fat in your liver, you were an alcoholic, but now we have five-year-olds with fat in their liver. In fact, 25% of all children have fatty liver disease today and they don't drink alcohol. So what caused their fatty liver? The same thing that caused their type 2 diabetes and their blood pressure and their mitochondrial dysfunction, their insulin resistance. And what is that? Well, in most cases, it's sugar. Because sugar and alcohol are metabolized in the liver the same way. So three different fat depots, three different risks in terms of chronic metabolic disease. So if you take a look at all of those eight diseases that I just rattled off, there are medicines for them. For instance, there's statin for heart disease. Does the statin fix the heart disease? No. There are anti uh, hyperglycemics, you know, oral hypoglycemics for type 2 diabetes. Do they fix the diabetes? 
No. Okay. And we can go on and on. The antihypertensives, do they fix the hypertension? No. So what we're doing is we're treating the symptoms of the disease rather than treating the disease itself. In fact, there is no treatment for any of those diseases. There is treatment for symptoms, but so what? In order for us to have a healthy American population, we actually have to fix the diseases, not treat the symptoms. It's like putting a Band-Aid on it. It's like giving an aspirin to a patient with a brain tumor. Might help the headache, ain't gonna do a damn thing for the brain tumor. That's what we're doing with medicine today. So we have to address where the problem is, and we haven't even come close. So how to solve this problem of chronic metabolic disease? Well, we have to make our mitochondria work better. Right now, our mitochondria are screwed. They are basically working at about 90% efficiency and capacity, and we need them at 100%. In fact, if you even go down 1%, you can see the effects. So our mitochondria are not doing their job. The question is, what's keeping them from doing their job? And the answer is, how much time do you have? <laughs> there. We have ionizing radiation, we have air pollution, we have toxins in the water, we have toxins in the food, we have microplastics, we have um, a whole host of things. But the biggest one, the big kahuna, the one that sort of blows all the others out of the water is our diet. Because our diet is filled with mitochondrial toxins. The biggest one, as I mentioned before, is sugar. There are others, but that's the one we could get rid of tomorrow if we had the political will to do so.